Hello, my name's Gordon Tate. Welcome to the latest edition of Beer Matters, where I attempt to bring you the latest interesting beer-related news from the East Staffordshire and South Derbyshire regions. time, Burton-on-Trent had nearly 40 different breweries. Those heady days are long gone and today we boast two major brewing concerns in Molson Coors and Marston's. But what we also have is a growing number of microbreweries. Today I'm visiting the latest addition to that list. The Burton Town Brewery is situated on Falcon Close just off Hawkins Lane and I'm here to meet the manager, the brewer and hopefully a customer or two. So let's go inside. John, good afternoon. So this is John Dale, who's the head brewer at Burton Town Brewery. John, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be involved with this brewing operation? Well, I'm from Litchfield down the road. Um, I've been working at Oakham Ales in Peterborough uh, okay. for about a year and a half and then found out about the opportunity here to, to head the brewing um, and jumped at it. And what's your history in terms of brewing? Um, home brewer, like lots of the new craft breweries, I'm a home brewer really and that's how I got into it okay. um, and it's really joining uh, home brewing clubs um, and learning lots through that and reading every book you can get your hands on. How many on. years ago was that when you started? Um, gosh, it, it's about eight, nine years. Uh, proper home brewing, all grain, the way we brew here. Um, and before that, the, you know, the kits that uh, you used to get from Boots. So a hobby became a profession? Hobby, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Okay. So, John, why don't you give us a little mini-guided tour and talk us through the process of how you brew the beer here? Okay. Um, well, first of all, we start with the water. Um, it's the hot liquor tank. Um, the water gets warmed up to the right temperature that we were after uh, to steep the grain in. Um, and we can, you can add treatments into here as well to get the water the right acidity and everything. Um, and we add it to the grain in here, the mash tun. The mash tun. Um, and it stays in there for about an hour. Um, and that's where the magic happens. We turn the, the grain into a nice sugary, malty, sweet uh, wort. And from there, after about an hour, we start transferring it into here. This is the kettle. So um, it's just the bar barley in here at this, at this Barley, stage, I mean, you can add other things like rice or corn as well. They're called adjuncts. Mm -hmm. um, but it's mainly your, bar your malted barley okay. uh, and your hot water. Right. Uh, and then from there, so after an hour, it's, it's, it's done, the enzymes have done their work, broken down the starch into sugar, and you've got some lovely sugary wort. You pump it into here and you boil it up for again an hour in the kettle um, and you can add hops to add flavour okay. and bitterness uh, they preserve it and also the boiling uh, uh, sterilises the water as well. Would it always just be one type of hops or do you do No do we do a whole variety. variety, we take hops from Europe, America, um, Australia, New Zealand. Um, but on one brew would it just be always be a single? No single we, do use, the hops? we do, we add them at different times as well so the hops we add at the beginning will give bitterness to the yes. brew and the yes. hops that we add at the end will give flavour and aroma. So that's important in terms of when mm. they're actually added yeah. to how they yeah. come through and in the flavours of the, absolutely. the beer. Yeah. 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 Fascinating. Uh, and so that's, it's in there for an hour boiling and once we've done all the hop additions and we've boiled it for, a hour, uh, for usually about an hour, uh, then we put it through the heat exchanger to cool it down because it needs to cool down before it goes into the fermenters over here where we add the yeast because we want the, to, to get the temperature just right for the yeast. If we add it too hot, we kill the yeast. These are the uh, Too vessels. cold, the yeast don't get working straight away. And these are all presumably all stainless, stainless steel? Stainless units. steel, yes, so they're easy to clean. So um, what sort of volumes are we talking about here? These are about a thousand litres, they're six barrels, six brewers barrels. And presumably you, you can only just do one brew at a time? Yeah. 
but yeah. you start the process yeah, and you follow on. Yeah, we're batch brewers, so you know, craft brewing is is a batch process. Depends on the size of your equipment. Your batch ours is about six barrels, which okay. is quite small. Right. Um, bigger brewers um, will be you know 10, 15 times that. Regional brewers will be, and you know your big national brewers. Well, they're doing it on a constant, yes. continuous basis. And what's what's on the brew at the moment then? What's the um, what's the last the brew I did was. Um, one of the most popular ones, the Albion, and the one before that was Scorned Woman, which is a traditional, they're both bitters. Um, Scorned Woman is a very traditional uh, bitter. Um, got lots of crystal in it. Yeah. <laughs> I can relate to that. The Albion is um, named after the football yes, club. Yes, of course, yeah. Um, so how many different brews do you do you have in total? We're constantly expanding, so I'm developing the range. We've just done a lager. Uh, we did a Kolsch before that. Um, so we've got, I thought, you know, I haven't counted. Um, we've probably got about a dozen now, a dozen different beers. And, and do you have a core uh, range? The core range are looking like the most popular ones are going to be the Albion and Scorned Woman. And we do a, a stout called Modwina. It's an oatmeal stout, dry oatmeal it's stout. It's a local name. Um, yeah, uh, we do a very strong, dark, uh, black IPA called Black as Hat, that's popular as well. Uh, that's the next brew I'm going to do. Okay. Um, I'm looking forward to trying some of these. Yeah, and we do, um, like I said, we've just done a lager um, to cater. So the lager, that's an interesting story mm. because a, a, a lager would normally be brewed in a slightly slightly different way, fermented in a yeah, the, ma the main difference is we use a lager yeast instead of an ale yeast in the fermenters okay. over there. Um, and that requires a slightly lower temperature than the ales, and so it takes longer as well. So it stays in there for about a month. Not top or bottom fermenting? Um, yeah, there are some ale yeasts that are bottom fermenting as well, um, and bottom crop. So, but, but mainly, most of the ales are, um, are a, a top fermenting um, and the lagers are bottom fermenting but also where you, if you want to re reuse them you, you crop them from over the top of the bottom and the, the different yeasts have different characteristics but largely yeah that's right that's excellent that's really interesting insight into how a brewery works in this sort of size operation thank you so now I'm with Steve Haynes who's the brewery manager here Steve tell us a little bit about the history of the place um, we started up really because we wanted to get Burton back on the map as somewhere where brewing was from. Um, it's sort of lost its way a bit over the last few years with sort of bass being sold off to Coors and Marston's going to um, Wardlampton and Dudley. That's correct. So it's, yeah. it's, it was started sort of let's get Burton back on the map for, for doing real tasty ales. Trying to replace a bit of the heritage yeah. that's been lost over the, yeah, over it's, the years. It, I mean, all of our beers, people say they've all got their own unique taste. It's not just one thing tasting the same as the next thing. And what year did you start here? Uh, 2015 we started. We got the keys for here in February of the following year. Uh, it was just basically an industrial unit when we came here. Um, so we've done a lot of the work we've, we've sort of done ourselves, getting friends and family to help out. Um, and it's, it's just evolved as it's, it's gone on. How, how often is it open to the public? Um, we're open Friday from 12 till 8, uh, and then Saturday 12 till 3. So I presume you pick up some of the Burton Albion football Yeah, Yeah, we, it's quite busy on match day. <laughs> okay. And, and what other facilities do you, do you offer apart from the, uh, the bar itself? Um, we do... Uh, we can do outside bars, uh, we, the um, venue can be hired out um, for private parties. We've had a wedding in here, we've had all sorts of bits and bobs. Uh, we've had Burton Scooter Club in there for their okay. Christmas party. We've even had Marston's in for their Christmas party, oh, yeah. which was in February. <laughs> did they insist on bringing one of their beers? They did, and uh, we sold five pints of it, <laughs> and that was it. Okay. Now, I noticed that you have th three or four uh, core beers. Yeah. I'm very interested in the new lager, um, which John has told me a little bit about, uh, the Kolsch lager. So I'd like to try one of those um, uh, when we get a chance. Uh, but I also know that you do keep a guest beer on us as yeah. well. Yeah, we, we, we try to... I mean, normally we try to have a, a, a local guest beer, uh, but we was contacted by a company in Cornwall. They'd heard about us on the internet. They was up in the area and said, we'll do some swaps, we'll bring some of ours up, and 
So and you've we'll sent some beer down to Cornwall. So we've Cornwall. sent some down to Cornwall and they've sent some up here. So. Excellent. Right. I'm all this talking is building up a first. <laughs> I would like to try some of your Which um, one would you like products. to try? Well, I'm very interested in the, in the Kolsch lager because that's a bit unusual for a, um, <coughs> a, a, a craft beer, uh, sorry, a craft brewery to actually produce a lager. Yeah. So I'd like to try okay. and have another pint of Kolsch. So, th so this is Kolsch lager beer. Yeah. Whereabouts does the, the name Kolsch come from? Please? It's from Cologne. It's a German pronunciation. <laughs> so, it, so it's based on a, a, a very German yeah traditional type recipe. Of, yeah. Of lager. Let's see what we think. Very pleasant. Very cool. Goes down. Goes down beautifully. That goes down beautifully. Golden coloured, very smooth palate, and just with a, a, a hint of a bite at the end, which is reminiscent of a very good quality German lager. Well, oh, that's much paler, isn't it? Yeah. Let's try that one. Okay. So you would, you would call this a lager as well, then, would you? And this yeah, is the that one is, that John's just That's um, a lager beer, that's brewing. a lager. Born Slippy. Born Slippy is the latest lager variant. More highly carbonated, with a, with a bite to the back of the throat. Very refreshing and would quench any thirst on a nice summer day. Cheers. So that's all for this edition of Beer Matters. My thanks to John and Steve. I wish them all the best for the future. Steve's just given me um, a cask version of the Born Slippy Lager to, to try. Less carbonated, smoother. My personal preference would be for, for this one. But I encourage you to come down to the brewery and try the beers yourself. Remember to drink responsibly though. I look forward to you joining me next time for another edition of Beer Matters. Cheers, my dears. Steve, that's really, really good beer. I, I like the way it's, um, it's beautiful and clear and, and uh, pin really, sharp. Really pleased with it. Yeah. Really and just what we're Excellent. Today. Well, I must say, your customers um, should be uh, proud of uh, what you're achieving here.